There's three ways you can impress an interviewer without having relevant work experience, having a relevant degree, completing projects, and gaining professional qualifications. And in this video, I'm gonna cover six qualifications out there that'll help you stand out when applying for credit risk jobs with number one on the list being the FRM. So the financial risk manager qualification, in my opinion, is the gold standard in risk management. If you've got two years of work experience and now you feel a career in a credit risk management is something you're serious about, then this is probably the path that you should consider. Now, I'm personally saying have two years of work experience first because this is a very niche qualification and is extremely hard. So that's why I'd recommend people begin this once they're certain that they enjoy what a job as a credit risk analyst actually entails. And when it comes to the structure, there's two parts to complete, part one and part two, and you'll be covering a syllabus on market, credit, operational, and liquidity risks. And as well as passing the exams, you'll need to complete two years of risk-based work experience. The pass rates for each paper have generally hovered around 45% for part one and 55% for part two. And upon completing the qualification, you'll be able to work in fields such as risk management, risk analytics, market risk, credit risk, as well as it being a great base for a future role as a chief risk officer. The next qualification, which is often seen in the same regards as the FRM, is the CFA. Now I have to make clear that the Chartered Financial Analyst qualification is not a risk specific qualification, but it is a great base to understanding financial concepts. It's mostly targeted at future portfolio managers, so this is something to be aware of when it comes to revising for the CFA and going for credit risk roles, as when you compare to candidates studying the FRM, there will be a little bit of a knowledge gap compared to the two candidates. And because it's a bit more holistic in its learning, the CFA is usually the qualification of choice for people looking to move from back office roles into front office. Now the makeup of the qualification is that there's three levels you need to pass and the material will generally be based around advanced investment analysis, portfolio management, as well as a strong emphasis on ethics. And as well as passing exams, you'll need to have roughly three years of relevant work experience in addition to having a bachelor's degree. There are some ways to go around those requirements, but that's the general prerequisites to studying for the CFA. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the CFA and FRM are completely different qualifications. Apart from the topics tested in each one, the CFA has a greater emphasis on qualitative material versus the FRM. Now, that may make it sound a little easier, but the sheer volume of the CFA material is immense. And that is usually the hardest part of studying for the CFA, just learning all the materials for the exams. The pass rates tend to demonstrate this with them ranging between 30 and 40%. So overall, this is a good qualification. You'll certainly get interviews by having the CFA on your CV, but there's one other qualification which is also a good all-rounder for credit risk roles, and that's a chartered accounting qualification. So this could be the ACA, CPA, CA, ACCA, whatever the professional chartered accounting qualification is in your country, that is the one I'm referring to here. Even though, again, this isn't a risk qualification, the reason why companies like chartered accountants probably a little more than CFA candidates is because as part of your qualification and your work experience, your job entails having to know a company inside out and you need to have a curious mindset as what risk could be facing a company. Both of these are great attributes for risk analysts. The structure of the qualification will vary slightly according to the country, but generally you will have around 13 papers each covering a different component on how to analyze and prepare a company's financial statements. And they'll generally require you to complete around three years of work experience. Out of all the ones I've covered so far, this is probably the most flexible as your qualification and knowledge will be transferable across industries and globally as well. I'm gonna leave a video above me where you can see some of the options that you'll have once you complete a chartered accounting qualifications. But when it comes to credit risk, it's very important your work experience is within the financial institutions. While almost all students pursuing the FRM or CFA will be based in financial institutions, which will give them a good understanding of the issues faced by financial companies, accountants don't always cover the financial sector, meaning they won't understand the intricacies of investment banks, private equities or other financial sectors and also the qualification doesn't cover financial products in any great detail. There'll probably only be one paper where you cover them and it's nothing compared to what you'll see in the first two qualifications. So if you are a chartered accountant and you're looking to transition into credit risk, 
then you'll probably have to do a little more self-study in terms of brushing up on your financial knowledge. So the professional risk manager qualification isn't often talked about, but it's usually seen alongside the FRM in terms of risk specific qualifications out there. Now I mentioned previously the FRM has a heavier focus on quantitative methods than the CFA. The PRM however has an even larger quantitative focus than the FRM. But focusing on recognition and from working in the industry for nearly a decade, I'd probably say the FRM has a better global recognition and so that's something that you should probably take into account, especially if you're wanting to move around the world a lot. But there are some features of the PRM which you probably will find a little more accommodating such as more flexible exam dates compared to FRM's fixed exam periods. The passing marks are usually 60% for the PRM versus 70% for the FRM and it's also a slightly cheaper qualification than the FRM. So focusing on the structure, there's two parts just like the FRM. The material will cover financial theory and instruments, risk management, credit risk, as well as market risk. And the requirements don't need you to have a bachelor's degree, although if that is the case, then the required work experience will be a little more complicated. And if you want to have a side-by-side -side comparison of all the qualifications I cover in this video, I'll have a document in the description box below which you can download and review in your own time. So the CRMP is offered by the Risk Management Society and I say this is a little more focused towards the North American market so if that's the geography that you're interested in working in then this will probably be most relevant for you. A big difference in the CRMP is that this is more of a competency based qualification. There's less theory and calculations required here and it's more about showing your experiences and how you've demonstrated good risk competencies. Looking at the structure, there's one two-hour exam consisting of 120 questions and the material consists of understanding the wider risk framework and your knowledge in showing how you'll identify, measure and mitigate risk. And when it comes to the requirements, these are a little more complicated and that's because it depends on the type of degree you have. It is possible to do the qualification without a degree, but I'm going to provide a full explanation in the document in the description box below so that you can see all the possible entry paths for this qualification. Now the next credit risk qualification I want to focus on isn't necessarily an outright qualification, even though there are some courses out there and that is Python. Now a large part of credit risk is about data. Without data, you won't be able to assess anything and this is why understanding how to pull and use data is absolutely key. So there's various methods to become qualified in Python or even SQL. One of the ways is of course to include it in your degree such as a computing degree. But the best way and by far the most impressive way is to complete projects or enter competitions where you use your skills in your own time. The interviewer will be able to assess how good you are at applying the knowledge that you have to real life scenarios and this is better than any qualification out there. There's actually quite a few different computer programs and languages out there that'll help you in your credit risk job as well as other financial jobs. I've already made a video where I cover some of these in detail as well as why they're important and how to use them. I'm going to leave that next to me so go check that out and I'll see you all in the next video.